I studied heavily on this over the past couple of weeks, and I, I, I stumbled across a Jewish website. And I know some of you are like, why is he talking about a mikvah? I'm going to get to the New Testament and what baptism is, but I want to give you a background. It's not something new. But the Jewish website on the mikvah said this. The water of the mikvah is designed to ritually cleanse a person from the deeds of the past. The convert is considered by Jewish law to be like a newborn child. By spiritually cleansing the convert, the mikvah water prepares him or her to confront God, life, and people with a fresh spirit and new eyes. It washes away the past and leaves only the future. The ancient Jewish believers believed that to go into the waters of the mikvah represented going back into the womb and being reborn. And their belief behind that was the idea that when a baby is in the mother's womb, it's in water. But when the water breaks, the baby emerges new life. And so their belief was that when people got down in the water and came back up, they were made completely new. See, the Jewish people knew what baptism represented. They knew when John the Baptist was talking about repent and be baptized for the kingdom of heaven is near. They weren't shocked by that statement. They weren't caught off guard by that. They knew because of their tradition that when John said repent and be baptized, they knew what that meant. It meant I'm leaving my old life behind. I'm turning my back on my sin. And I'm going to get in this water because I'm determined to go forward with what God has for me. They knew when John was making those statements. They understood it. I'm amazed when I study culture and I study, uh, study uh, American Christianity and how so often we, we miss what baptism is. We've misapplied it, we've mistaught it, we've misunderstood it. I personally believe that baptism is possibly the most misunderstood teaching and topic in all of American Christianity. To be honest with you, and I, I'm going to show you here in a minute, but one of the things that was amazing to me as I studied other religions and, and, and other cultures, when people would convert from a Muslim faith to, a Christian, to Christianity, it was wild to me that they said, I was reading an article yesterday, and one of the Muslims said, he said, when, I, when you get saved, when you give your life to Jesus, and you start reading your Bible, it doesn't cost much hostility. He said, but when you get into the waters of baptism, they want to kill you. Because they understand that in baptism it's a picture that your old life is gone and you're no longer living the way you used to live. Right. That was their belief. Yeah. And one of them said, he said, by being baptized I would turn my back. I had to turn my back on my house, on my property, on my old way of life. I, had to, I could never come back home. They said, but we accept this because we want Jesus. Amen. And so they would go through the waters of baptism. I talk about it being misunderstood. Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, he said, look, you're talking to the Pharisees. He said, look, guys, you cancel the word of God. You make it ineffective just to pass down your tradition. Just to pass down your tradition. And one of the things that we've done is we tell people, well, you just get baptized just to tell people you're following God. Well, it's much deeper than that. It's much more than that. We cannot afford to ignore the scriptures. That's why today I'm going to give you a lot of Bible. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture. Anytime you come to this church, I pray that you get a lot of Bible. I pray that you get the Word of God because the Word of God is what really changes our life. My opinion, don't mean squat, but this book carries a whole lot of weight. Yeah. This book carries a whole lot of weight. And so Jesus in Mark chapter 16, verse 16 says this, Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. Mm -hmm. So he said baptism was a part of belief. It was a big deal. You also see Jesus after the resurrection. He tells the disciples this in Matthew 28, verse 19. He said, go therefore, make disciples of all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So make disciples and baptize them. And he told them this is not a suggestion. It was a command. Be baptized. Mm -hmm. Get in the water because it really does matter. Jesus goes to the cross, he's resurrected, Acts chapter 2 happens, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes, it's an incredible thing. Peter, the, the apostle, is preaching to thousands of people. The Bible says that as he's preaching, they're cut to the heart, they're convicted in their heart. They said, what do we do to be saved? And in Acts 2.38, Peter cries out, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So he said, what do we do to be saved? He said, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you stop there, it would be convicting. But the fact is, is it keeps going. And this, this, this scripture, three verses later, that amazes me. He gets done saying this to thousands of people, 3,000 people, which probably would have been more if you counted women and children. He said this, those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church 
that day, 3,000 and all. Day so 3,000 people get saved, and the very same day, 3,000 people get baptized. 3,000 people hear the gospel, and they say, it's not enough for you to hear the gospel. Look, let's go down to this water down here, because there was lots of water around there. And they said, let's get in the water, because you need your sins washed away. And that was what they taught. That was what the early church believed and taught. It's the Bible. And so we have to really examine that. And so I talked to you about the mikvah and how it was, it was a washing. When they were getting that, it would wash the dirt away. That was in the Old Testament. But I want to show you the New Testament view on baptism. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. And it says this. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body but the pledge of a clear conscience towards God. Oh, yes. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and who is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to Him. Right. So baptism is not me getting there and washing dirt off of me. Baptism is me getting in the water and God washing that sin and that dirt away so my conscience is clear before God. Right. I know of people that went down in the water and come up and they're experiencing so much peace. Yes. So much joy. They feel this closeness to the Lord because your conscience is clear. If you're mad at me, don't get mad at me. It's in here. <laughs> your right. conscience is clear right. when you get baptized. It's incredible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 2 says this. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud and they passed through the sea, the Red Sea. They were all baptized into Moses. And so he says that they were baptized into Moses. And I want to explain to you, the Bible talks about this experience is a representation of baptism for us. In Exodus chapter 14, there's a story of God's people who were enslaved to the Egyptians. They had been in slavery for years, hundreds of years they were in slavery. Finally, God delivers them out of Egypt. They escape Egypt, they're out. They're no longer in the area of Egypt, but they're gone. But the Egyptians are right behind them chasing them. And the Israelites say, Moses... Why have you led us here to die? We should have just stayed in Egypt. And God speaks to Moses and says, Moses, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says then that God parts the Red Sea. God's people go across on dry ground. The moment the last Israelite puts his foot on the other side, the Egyptians were coming through after them. God closes the water and drowns the Egyptians and drowns their past in the water. It's a picture of baptism. So let me ask you, were they truly free when they got out of Egypt or were they truly free when they got across the Red Sea? When they crossed the Red Sea. It's a picture of the death and burial and resurrection. When you go under this water today, it's a picture of the death and burial of your old life. When you come up, it's a picture of resurrection and new life. You are leaving it in the water. I've seen people in their past life who have done things that have ruined their, their health. And there was a story of a man that I heard. He was preaching at a church and he was teaching on baptism. There was a man that had came. He had been addicted to cocaine for years. And the cocaine had ruined his heart. And he was in constant pain. His heart was hurting all the time. He was in constant pain. He went to the doctor. His heart was ruined. The doctors told him he needed a heart transplant, but they wasn't going to give him one because he had done it to himself with cocaine. There was other people that needed it more than him. They told him, there's nothing you can do. I hate it. You're just going to have to just deal with it. And so for four years, he suffered with severe pain in his heart. Severe pain. He goes, gets saved. He's born again. He gets in the waters of baptism. He hears a teaching on baptism, talking about the old life is gone and the new has come. He goes down in the water. When he gets up, he's completely healed. His heart is made new. He's amazed by it. He says, I've got to go back to the doctor. I've got to go back and I've got to have him examine my heart because something has happened to me. He goes back to the doctor. The doctor begins to look at his heart. The doctor is just astounded. The doctor said, what happened? Where is the scar? Because you had to have had some kind of surgery. He said, I didn't know what to tell the doctor. He went back and told the preacher. The preacher said, I know what you should have told him. You should have told, you should have told him the scars were in the left hand and the right hand of the Son of God. And he made you do the Lord. He made you do in the water. I, I remember being about 14 or 15 years old at a place called The Ramp in Hamilton, Alabama. I watched a lady with scoliosis. Of the, as she was bent over, her back was messed up. She got in the water. And when she got in the water, she was baptized with a crooked back. She came up, and before my eyes, I watched her completely yes. straight out and be healed. Yes. Yes. I watched it as a kid. And I was amazed. Yes. And I said, there's got to be something more than just getting in the water. Amen. There's got to be something to it. 
Galatians chapter 3 verse 27 says, And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. So you're going to get in this water with dry clothes on. When you get in the clothes, you're going to get wet. You're going to change clothes. In the same way, you're taking off the old life and you're putting on Christ when you come out of that water. You're putting on Christ. Y'all okay? Normally y'all kind of live and up a little. It's baptism Sunday. Y'all get excited a little bit now. And so it's amazing to me the Bible talks about you have put on Christ in baptism. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11 through 13 says this. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with Him you were raised to newness of life, because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. It wasn't cut away yet. Then God made you alive in Christ for He forgave all of our sins. He said you were buried with Christ in baptism. And you were raised to newness of life. He said what you're doing today is you're burying the old life. Uh, One pastor says it like this. Every person that gets baptized, before he baptizes them, he tells them, Welcome to your funeral. Enjoy it. And he'll baptize them and pull them up. Because he believes that it's truly a funeral for the old life to be left in the water. Amen. And this scripture here I find to be amazing in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. That I really want you to hear what it says. Because I really believe this will give you an understanding on baptism and clarity on baptism. That is really amazing. You don't hear it preached on, but it's there. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. What then shall we say? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may increase? Certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? He says, how can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Or aren't you aware that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? We therefore were buried with Him through baptism unto death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with Him like this in His death, We will certainly also be united with Him in His resurrection. Now listen to this sentence. We know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body of sin might be rendered powerless so we should no longer be slaves to sin. For anyone who has died has been free from sin. Now listen. He says, how can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Don't you know that in baptism, you were baptized into his death? What he's saying is, in baptism, when you come back up, sin no longer has control over your life. No dominion. That's right. That's right. broken off of your life. And what I'm not saying, I'm not saying the temptation doesn't come. But what I'm saying is sin does not have control over your life. Temptation comes. It comes. But it's broken in baptism. It's broken in baptism. The amazing thing that when you study the Bible, you'll find that there was no such thing as a New Testament believer that wasn't baptized. Nowhere in the Bible. You see the thief on the cross, but it was before the resurrection. It was considered still in the Old Testament because the New Testament really starts at the resurrection. And so when you read this book, you see... That baptism was a big deal. You see that it really wasn't taken lightly. It wasn't a suggestion. People say, well, do do I have to be baptized to be saved? It's one of the things where you look in the Word and you see that truly salvation and baptism went hand in hand, how they taught it. And I would say it like this. No, I don't believe that you have to be baptized to be saved. But then I would flip it around and say, why would you not want to be baptized if He tells you to do it? I believe, yes, you can go to heaven apart from it, but I don't believe you'll ever be fully what God wants you to be without it. The way I look at baptism is kind of like this ring, this wedding ring. This ring isn't what got me married. A pastor stood in front of me and my fiance at one time and pronounced us husband and wife. And we put rings on our finger. And like I told second service, I'm pretty good looking. So, you know, it's a joke. So when you're out in public and you walk in by and somebody looks at you, when they see this ring, it lets them know, I don't belong to the world no more. 
I belong to my wife. Right. And so in baptism, let me tell you what baptism means. It means I no longer belong to the world anymore. I can't live like the world. I can't talk like the world. Right. I can't think like the world. I can't right. act like the world. I belong to Jesus. Right. That is what baptism represents. I belong to Jesus. You see, all throughout Scripture, they talk about baptism in the New Testament. You see a story of the Ethiopian eunuch that he's riding on a carriage and he's reading from the book of Isaiah. He doesn't know what he's reading. And one of the, one of the disciples runs up to him and explains to him that he said, you're reading about Jesus. You're reading about the cross. He was led like a, a, a silent lamb to be slaughtered. And he leads him to Jesus. And the guy says, look, why can't I be baptized? There's water right there. He says, we can do it right now. They get out, take him into water. He's baptized. Yes. You see the story of Cornelius. Peter preaches to Cornelius. His whole household believes and every one of them were baptized. They said, we got to do this. Because they knew that when I get in that water, I'm not turning back. It's for real when I get in that water. Right. It's for real. So why would you not want to be baptized? Why would you avoid it? When, when there's blessing in it. When there's blessing in doing what God says. Mm -hmm. Tell you, blessing follows obedience. And I think so often we, we do an injustice and we just suggest it to people. We say, if you want to do it, you, you know, just know it's a command. Repent. Be baptized. Yeah. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. It's in the Word. Yeah. Yeah. And my heart desires that people would obey the Scriptures and see that if God tells you to do it, He'll never tell you to do something that won't bless you. It won't be beneficial for your life. Come on. You need Come on. to drown your own life in the water. You need it left there. I've been baptized so many times, the first one's all I needed. But every time I get around water, I just want to be rebaptized. It was just cool. You know, I just, and I didn't say this in first and second service, but I just, just kept thinking about it after. If you're in the room and you're questioning your baptism, maybe you say, Well, I was baptized at two years old. That's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But I'll say it like this. If you didn't know what you were doing, friend, you didn't get baptized. Come on. If you didn't have faith, if you didn't understand the gospel, you didn't get baptized. If you're questioning your baptism, if you're doubting whether or not it was legit, it doesn't hurt to get baptized. You should know the day that you got baptized. You should know the day that it became real for you. In Acts 22, verse 16, Paul is telling the story of his conversion. Towards the beginning of the book of Acts, Paul used to be Saul. He was murdering Christians. He was per persecuting them. He was coming against them in such crazy ways. And one day he's on the road. Road to Damascus. And the Bible says that God speaks to him. Jesus speaks to him and says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? He's knocked off of his horse. He's blind. He's led to a, a, a place, a house on Straight Street. For three days, he doesn't eat or drink. He's blind. God speaks to a man named Ananias. He says, Ananias, go to him. He says, I ain't going to him. I know all about that dude. I know who he used to be. He's trying to kill people like me. God says, look, Ananias. He's an instrument of mine to preach the gospel. Go to him. He goes to him. He lays hands on Paul. His eyes are open. He's healed. He receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's doing incredible things. But in Acts 22, Paul gives us a different perspective of what happens. He says this. He says, while Ananias was talking to him, Ananias said this. Paul, what are you waiting for? Get up. Be baptized. And wash your sins away, calling on his name. And so I want to ask you today. What are you waiting for? Call on his name. Amen, yes. Be baptized today. Wash your sins away. Father, I love you. God, I thank you for your word. God, I know it's challenging. But sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's truth. I ask God that you would speak to every heart in this room. I ask that your spirit would move from the left to the right, from the front to the back. God, I come against every lie of the enemy, every assignment of the enemy that would say, oh, you don't need baptism. I come against
forgets every lie of the enemy that tells you you're good. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would convict hearts in the room. Yes. Those that need to be baptized. Yes. Those that need to experience new life. Those that need a clear conscience. Those that need their past drowned in the water. Let them call upon your name today. In Jesus' name. Amen. First service, we had seven people baptized. It was incredible. Second service, we had 15 people scheduled to get baptized. 32 got in the water. And right now we've got, right now we've got seven or eight down here in the front. But if you're in this room and God is convicting your heart, if you're in this room and you say, that word was for me, I need to be baptized. If you're in this room and God is drawing you to make that commitment, to make that decision, I've got good news. We've got clothes. We've got shirts. We've got towels. we got the ovary. we got under. we got it all. So if you're in this room today and you say, I want to be baptized, I don't want to wait. I don't want to leave here without doing it. You can do it. We're fixing to have a song called Waymaker. We're going to get our hearts ready for baptism. We're going to worship the Lord. But during this song, it's about an eight-minute song. During this song, if this is you, and you want to make that decision, over here you see Mr. Jeff Howell got a shirt on that says, I declare. Over there we got Miss Misty. If you're a lady and you want to be baptized during this song, I want you to immediately don't wait because we don't have a lot of time. I want you to get out of your seat and go to her. And if you're a, a male, if you're a man, go to see Mr. Jeff. We're going to talk with you, pray with you. They're going to get you some clothes. And we're going to get in the water and be
Thank you, Jesus. But I kind of like the moments where God shows up and just wrecks everything he has planned. You know, in my mind, I'm like, sing that song perfectly, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Up, all those things. And then God's like, no, I care about your heart. Hallelujah, yes. I got to baptize my seven-year-old little girl. Woo! Bless her. And I didn't know that was coming. In a good way. And I just want to say that, um, just to echo what Zach said, if God's, if you feel something stirring in your heart, man, we saw a seven-year-old, we saw kids younger, and we saw an 81-year-old. Yes, Lord. yes. yes. God will not lead you in the wrong direction. All right, it's such an honor to see you this morning. I'm ready when you are, Zach. I can't wait. Let's do it. Let's do it.
pray that they would encounter you, yes. Jesus, that their life yes. would be changed. To be born again. On, yes. Pray. God, I thank you. I thank you again, God, for what you're doing in this room. I pray that they would feel your presence. We ask for a mighty encounter with your spirit, God, that they would never be the same. God, I just declare Romans 6 over them, that the power of sin is broken, that they're no longer a slave to sin, they're no longer a slave to fear. God, anything the enemy's planned for their life, we ask that they would die in this water. In Jesus' name, they were buried with Christ in baptism and raised to newness of life, that they may live for the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Must be born again. I'm proud of you. I'm excited for you. See what God has for you in your life. You know, He made you for a very special purpose. Nobody can do it but you. And uh, someone missing your faith, but I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. What do y'all think about this church? Amen. Amen. It never gets old. It never gets old. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these two today. God, I thank you for Riker. I thank you for this man of God that's making a decision. God, he says, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As yes. for me and my house, we're going to do what you called us to do. Yes. God, it's amazing seeing an adult and a teenager say, I'm following Jesus, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Upon yes. their heart in such a mighty way. Let your spirit touch them, God, from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. I ask God for a radical encounter yes. with your goodness, with your mercy, with your presence. Let them never be the same. Right. In Jesus' name. Amen. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Bill. For sons and daughters, God, that are coming after you, 
that are choosing to follow you. Jesus, I thank you. This is the greatest decision they could ever make. God, I thank you that they are buried with Christ in baptism and raised to newness of life. I thank you that those that are baptized have put on Christ yes. like a garment. I ask today, God, that as they go in this water and come up, they will follow you with all of their heart. Yes. Let them shine brightly for you in the midst of darkness. Let them get up every day and make their mind up. I am following Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. We now baptize you guys in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Thank you, Jesus. That's what ministry is all about. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Some more youngsters. I don't know if they're... I think they're not that bad guys. Hallelujah! In one day. Randall, Bruce, what you about? 
that potassium. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Gives me chill bumps. What a day. Amazing day. I met this guy four years ago on Wheeler Street. You're awful close. Come on, we got four more. About to go kill us. Really? Let's see. Speak it into existence. We stopped and prayed for him, and this is just proof of that. This is what Jesus can do.
Lord, this wasn't just a moment. Jesus, this is true life change, and you're doing it here in Dyer's Word, Tennessee. Lord, you deserve the glory for that. So we leave this place with strength. We leave this place with hope, Lord, to bring more to you next week. Yes. We'll resuscitate in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate Jesus? Blessing today. Oh man, thank you. Bro. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.